Once they close it, that's when it gets intense. It started to get really difficult to breathe. My heart was racing. It was hard to catch my breath. You can't doze off in a sweat lodge. I was thinking, if I pass out in here, no one's going to even know. It was a little bit scary. Women are biohackers by nature. We're Lauren and Katie. We're taking a look at the wildest health hacks, wellness treatments, and the most cutting edge biotechnologies. We're taking you inside and unlocking the secrets only women could. This is Biohackers. Many native cultures practice shamanic healing, working in tune with nature to biohack the body. Indigenous sweat lodges are one of their powerful rituals to purify mind, body, spirit, and promote overall longevity. We're no strangers to sweating at higher dose. But can we stand the sensory deprivation heat of a Temescal ceremony? Well, we're going to enter the womb of Mother Earth to be reborn. What's better than that? <laughs> right. Sweat Lodge is a prayer ceremony. It's like um, Native American church, essentially. Sweat Lodge's ceremonies usually last around two and a half to three hours. You're ready to get hot. Yes. We're ready to get hot. OK, excellent. But how hot? It's going to be hotter than they expect. I thought the sweat lodge was going to be a piece of cake because I'm obsessed with saunas, but I've never done a traditional sweat lodge. So it can get three, four times as hot as a steam bath or a sauna. We've had some like really macho guys that come here and say, I do hot yoga all the time, and they leave in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's different. Most people say it's too hot. It can get so hot that it, it can feel like your skin is burning. The heart can start to beat quickly. Some people will get a headache. Wow. Most people are very challenged by the heat, and so if you need to get out, just say the sacred words, I need to get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I can remember that. <laughs> Let's do it. He sat us down by the fire and did like an opening ceremony. The first thing we always do is we smudge ourselves, we use sage to cleanse the aura. My name is Patrick Harbula, Nina Moyi, which is a Blackfeet word for man wolf, given to me by a Blackfeet elder. Patrick was incredible. Felt like we were in the best hands. Seemed like he had a really authentic experience in terms of studying under native cultures, and he just seemed really committed to the practice. And then we pass the talking stick. Each person shares what their intention is. Everything I've ever brought into the lodge for healing has always been healed. The more we speak what's inside, put it outside, the more we create an empty vessel to be filled with spirit throughout the ceremony. I always encourage everyone to be as open and vulnerable as possible. Something's heavy on your heart. Get it out. I feel I have guilt all the time about not spending enough time with my kids. I feel guilty about not doing enough work. So I would like to leave that and just let go of whatever it is making me feel like I'm not doing enough. I find that, you know, a lot of times I'm not fully present and enjoying the moment and enjoying life. I think I want to try and find joy in every day. You bring things into any kind of ceremony with a sacred intention, magic happens, miracles happen. We passed around different like totems that mean different things that you're supposed to kind of like reflect on beforehand. Okay, so there's four rounds in the ceremony. First round is usually the longest and also the mildest, and each round gets progressively shorter and hotter, mm -hmm. but it'll be very, very hot. It's uncomfortable for everyone, even me in, this, in the final round. Some people that just, this is not for them. So it's not about pushing beyond our limitations or anything like that. It's about being in harmony with our bodies, in harmony with Mother Earth and Father Sky. I was excited to enter the lodge and, and just get the sweat on. Let's go get changed and get ready. And then each person takes a pinch of tobacco and uh, speaks their intention into the tobacco just loud enough for themselves and the fire to hear it. Drop it in the fire and then they line up and we bless them in, each person in one at a time with the feathers and sage. And then we went head on in into the sweat lodge. The metaphor, the symbolism is we're crawling back into the womb of Mother Earth to be reborn. The sweat lodge itself is not glamorous at all, but it was like much bigger than expected. I mean, it's dark, you crawl in. Almost looked like an igloo. It was also right beside a huge fire pit. So I knew that somehow that heat from that fire was gonna get into the sweat lodge. The grandfather stones are, are being heated in the fire for about an hour or so. Our fire keeper dusts all the rocks off to get the cinders off, brings them in on a pitchfork and hands it to me. There was a little dugout hole in the hut where the rocks went and that's what created the heat inside the lodge. We were putting blessings to it and offerings and chanting to them and for me it felt like just this big gratitude practice. After several rocks were slid in, it started to get very hot. In about seven rocks usually in the beginning, and then we pour water on the stones. Which created the steam and stifling heat. The firekeeper then closed the flaps. It gets completely dark, and uh, 
super hot. I didn't know it was gonna be pitch pitch black. That's when it gets intense. Some people are claustrophobic. To feel that hot and also to not be able to see anything, not know where you were, it was actually like a little bit unsettling. I was thinking, if I pass out in here, no one's gonna even know. So kind of was a little bit scary. It started to get really difficult to breathe. My heart was racing. It was hard to catch my breath. It would just get hotter and hotter and hotter and build up, build up, build up. And the longer you're in there, the hotter it gets. The heat felt oppressive. It was like this humid, wet heat. We find ourselves in this completely dark, very hot. We're being cooked, we're being gestated for usually around three hours for our sweat lodges. It felt like I wasn't releasing the heat by sweating fast enough compared to how much more heat was coming at me. That pain is part of the experience. In the Native American tradition, the only thing a human being can truly offer to greater as a sacrifice is one's own pain. There were four rounds. First round is calling in the directions. In between each round, there was a brief break where the flap came up before you started the next round. And then we bring in more hot rocks and we sing chants to the hot rocks. We bless them. I remember after the first round, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get through two, three, and four if this is the way it's gonna feel. We close up the flap again, it's completely dark. I got through the experience with, you know, drinking as much water as I could, which just helped enduring that overall length of time that we were in there. I think that's why they do the chanting and the singing and the affirmations, is to kind of distract you a little bit, take you more out of your physical body and into like the spiritual side of things. Great spirit, welcome Tonka, Tonka Sheila, welcome to this love. He was saying these ancient affirmations, connecting with the great spirit, ancestors. And it felt like this like, church experience. And I think it's because when you take away those senses like that, everything kind of gets like amplified. When people do surrender, they can be opening and embracing whatever demons come up for people, whatever challenges, mental, emotional, all of this stuff comes up. It's magnified in, in the sweat lodge and it comes up for one reason and that's to be healed. So Spirit says that some of you have some areas in your life that you're resisting or going against the current. Once I started to get into more of the spiritual aspect of it, I thought about people that have been close to me that passed away. I thought about what I was grateful for, and I started to really appreciate connecting to something bigger than ourselves. I had a lot of emotional moments in there. Patrick would say something, and I felt like he was just speaking to me. I felt like I had so much empathy for myself and other people, and it really stirred up a lot of emotions for me. And there was a couple times that I broke down in tears, but it just felt so good to release. You know, people come here because they want a healing ceremony. So, you know, if people are challenged, I mean, that's a good thing. You can leave anything that no longer serves you in the sweat lodge. I went in thinking this is gonna be a piece of cake, but it was definitely way hotter than I anticipated and just much more difficult. I felt like it was really intense for me and I was really pushed to sweat for like three plus hours in a way that I'm not used to. And so when people come out, oftentimes they're a little bit disoriented, a little bit dizzy, just like a newborn baby coming into the world for the first time. I kind of felt like out of my body a little bit, a little bit lightheaded, a little bit woozy, but just like so refreshed to be out in the like fresh air. I felt like cleansed. So I totally get the feeling of being reborn as you come out. When I emerged from the lodge, I felt very light, I felt reborn, I felt obviously excited to just be out of the darkness and see the world, where I just felt kind of like more connected and inspired. I feel like it was a lot of sweat that I sweat out, but I also feel like it was energetically took a lot. I could definitely see how, aside from the spiritual benefits, this was really like a cardio workout, and I could see how it would definitely boost your heart function. Getting down oxidative stress, any sort of blockages that stand in your way from thriving. I want to honor each of you for coming in a sacred way, because we've had people that film things here and, and it's, you know, they kind of might joke, joke around or not not really step into the sacredness. And you guys did that beautifully. Thank you. So I honor Thank you and appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have native blood, but we do honor these traditions as sacred traditions. And the elders that I've studied with actually want these ceremonies to be spread far and wide. I feel so inspired by the native, you know, culture. Um, the little bit that I do know, I really resonate with their traditions and I just feel so grateful that I got to experience this. It left me feeling inspired to find more ways that I could utilize physical health practices that would actually connect me to spirit.